my loves, welcome back to another video. And this time I want to share my all time top tips for keeping your kitchen functional and efficient. This area of the house usually gets a lot of activity. It's high traffic. I mean, everyone gravitates towards the kitchen. Although I would like to think it's because mummy is here. I know, it's the food. I'm seriously not a fan of spending hours in the kitchen cooking, feeding my family and then doing all that clean up. I just want to do what I have to do, what I need to do, what I want to do, but as quickly as possible. I've done a video on efficiency where I talked about routines, habits, workstations and zones and also one on basic kitchen do's and don'ts before this and if you want to watch these videos, I have added the links in the description box. Today I want to add some new ideas to that list and reiterate some essentials too and of course share some tips. The first tip is to have a home for all your stuff. I know you have heard that many, many times before. Have a home for everything. Indeed, but where? Sometimes it's all about where do you put it? Now, even though you have a cutlery drawer, a crockery cabinet, in every kitchen, you will also have those items that require easy access, but do not fall into a specific category. And for that reason, you need to have a cabinet. Although I do have a rather large pantry, my family finds it easier to access certain items from a nearer space. So it is kind of filled with what you can call your one-offs. We have glass bottles, which I plan to reuse, snacks, biscuits. My dad, for example, likes to regularly check on his stash of biscuits. My recipe books are also here because they are so accessible. And then there are food processors and blenders here too. Now, should some of these items ideally be in the pantry? Probably, but it's not about perfection. It's about everyone being comfortable with where things are, where they create efficiency, where they give you a system. And since my family doesn't really like going to the pantry, I keep certain things here in the kitchen where my family is. Think of these shelves as a self-serve pantry. Now, I'm all about self-serve. You know that we even have a self-serve fridge because it just makes things more convenient. So this cabinet works for us. It's all about family first, isn't it? These sort of cabinets are an important part of having an efficient kitchen because you get to store these frequently reached for items close by. I've also ordered some labels for these boxes to take convenience to the next level. Now, to be efficient, you also need to have uncluttered spaces to work in. But that does not mean the counters have to be empty. The counter can be home to certain chosen items. Be selective of these items, but it is good to keep your necessities as close as you are comfortable. It's all about ease and efficiency. It's not about perfection. There are many suggestions you will find on Pinterest and such, but remember, there are no rules. It's all about what works for you. Now, the next tip is connected with the earlier one, and that means it's no point having a home for everything unless you actually put things back where they belong. Taking things out always seems simpler than putting things away. So make it a habit to put things away immediately after use. Do not put down, put away. How do you put things away again depends on your personal preference and your convenience. You might have an actual space for each item or you might prefer to corral them in baskets and bins. The important thing is to put gadgets and tools back where they belong. Consistently putting things back is the key to being efficient. The only way to know exactly where your things are and to be able to get to them quickly is to put them back where they belong. Efficiency is knowing. It's the knowledge of where it will be the next time you need it. Tip three is also in connection with your countertops. If you are feeling a sense of visual clutter, even though you have minimized only to the things you're sure you need on your counters, then consider masking those bottles and boxes and packages. This will give a very streamlined look to your space. Tip four is if you're following tip three and replacing original packets with dispensers and bottles, then it's important to have a refill day. 
The bottle should never be empty because that defeats the purpose. Top up your items and set yourself up for the week. Let me say this as kindly as possible, that if you are refilling spices, oil or even dish soap and cereals more often than twice a week, you probably need to reconsider your system or at least the size of the containers. Tip 5 is that you should not have to walk more than 5 steps to get anything that you reach for more than once a day. This is about keeping the things you need around you. If you find you're spending actual time getting items that you use regularly, it is time to create a new system and rearrange those things. My pots, spices, refrigerator, ladles are all a step away from my stove and this makes my tasks very efficient to complete. It is a great time saver to keep things where you use them. Sometimes there is a little confusion on keeping things where you use them is whether the dishes need to be kept near the dishwasher for easy put away or near where they are being used. Now I recommend keeping them where they are being used. That enforces the five step rule. Here's why. It is easier to create a few stacks of dishes and carry them to the respective cabinets. It is so much harder to have to walk all the way to the washing area each time you need something while you're doing something else or planning to do something else. And you actually want to use those things in other parts of the kitchen. Stick to keeping frequently used things five steps away from where they are used and not from where they are collected for washing. Tip six is to spend at least 10 minutes a day cleaning or reorganizing one small part of your kitchen. You can do a cabinet, you might do a drawer, or you might prefer to organize by category, plates one day, drinking glasses the next, whichever works for you. And more importantly, you can switch between the two styles of cleaning depending on your mood for the day. It's all about what your kitchen needs that day or that week. Again, there are no rules. It's all about being consistent and doing what you need to do. Tip seven is to clean as you go. Do not leave items on your counters. Just one day, one day of getting busy or lazy and not putting them away will lead to a rather unproductive next day. Don't create extra cleaning. Wipe spills as you go. Put lids and ladles on a kitchen paper towel or on a plate during use. Or you can even get one of these ladle holders if you prefer. Cleaning stains is extra work no one needs. And then these go directly into the sink after use and then they get washed as well. While cleaning as you go, there are four items that you should wash immediately. Your knife, grater, sieve, the garlic press and your peeler. Bits of dried food on these tools are very difficult to remove, especially because they have sharp grooves. So to avoid having to scrub meticulously and risking hurting your fingers, just do them immediately. Another trick is to apply a little oil to the cutters. This stops the bits of food from sticking to the blades. Tip eight, never leave food or scraps sitting on the countertops or open bins. This will probably lead to an insect infestation. In fact, even if you're soaking a dish or a pan overnight, cover it. It will ensure that you do not get any creepy crawlers in your kitchen. Most people have a food section, be it a cabinet or a pantry. It is better to keep food all in one place, although there are exceptions, as, as we mentioned, because it's easier to take stock if it's all in one place. But it also lessens the insect issue. And here's a tip. Put a couple of bay leaves in your lentils and beans. Those bugs will stay away. Tip nine is to have an equipped under the sink cabinet. Having your supplies available and in one place is the easiest way to make sure it is easy to clean up. You can keep your rags, towels, extra paper towels, soaps, brushes, detergents and sorts in this place. And tip 10 is to make it a point to do three things at least once every single day. You want to empty your sink at least once at night and that includes running your dishwasher. Uh, number two is to put away all the dishes at least once every day and completely empty your dish rack at least a couple of times a week. Now this would be a good time to wash the rack as well. 
Number three is to wipe your counters and clean your floors at least once a day as well, preferably at the end of the cooking day. And if you can do these 10 things, seriously, I'm confident you will keep your kitchen running smoothly. Consistently do these things for a few days and you will see a difference, but you have to be consistent for it to work. Remember, consistency makes a habit and habits create routines. I hope you will try practicing these habits because trust me, they really work. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it has been helpful to you. I hope it will motivate you to evaluate the efficiency in your kitchen. And until the next video, this is Ravina saying, Happy homemaking.